Let's check out some brand new knives. Now, this is not a brand new knife. This is the Wii Knife Co. Nefaris. However, it is one of the best Wii knives made, in my humble opinion. I do, I did place it in best knife of the year for 2023. However, it was kind of difficult to get, but now it is available. You can get them right now in every single version. I will have it linked down in the description. Everything will be linked down in the description from this video, but yeah. Really, really awesome knife. Just amazing, amazing action overall. The build quality, the fit, the finish. Some of the best flipping action I've ever experienced on a knife. It just, the leverage point of the flipper tab is just up so high. This thing kicks out like a horse. And then this blade, in my opinion, it has some elegance, yet it looks nasty. I freaking love it. The geometry is really nice. This one has the, the hand satin finish from heel to tip and i think it looks really good with the little blue accents the clip great clip works great nice and smooth in and out of the pocket which is something very important to me when you're going to be carrying you know a, a good quality knife or a knife period another one really quick the kanwu padre is available right now for pre-order but it, it ships out in march so you'll be getting it really quickly if you did want to get one these were super popular and they sold out really quickly so i know some of you guys did not get a chance to get one some of the new versions are well the one that's available right now for pre-order is you have one just like this and then there's a reverse tux one with dlc i freaking think that's the best looking one of them all i personally love dlc though so you know that's going to be an opinion it is vanax steel so you really don't need a coating but to me that reverse tux just looks great i think the price is good on these the fit, the finish, tolerances, action, everything across the board is very, very well done. This is a high quality knife, hands down. The next model is the Petrified Fish Hair Tail, I think the name is. What an interesting name. Now, Petrified Fish does really... I mean, they have all different price ranges. I was going to say they do really good budget knives, but they also have premium knives, but they, they do a pretty damn good job. This is solid carbon fiber. And personally, I like the look of this carbon fiber. You know, it's just a different cut of carbon fiber, but I personally like it. I think it looks really good. It has a nice texture to it where it's smooth yet you know you because it is um because it is made a, a fiber i guess you could say you know it does have a little it's very smooth but it but it has something to it that that feels good in the hand that that kind of holds on to you a little bit better than maybe something else that might be very slick the action Petrified Fish usually does a good job with action. Not always, not always, not all, not all, but a lot of times they do. Beautiful clip point blade in K110, so it's basically D2 steel. Good access to the lock bar. Uh, relatively thick liner lock, um, eh, decently thick. The clip is just a standard bent clip, so I do think that that takes away from the appearance. You know, they had an opportunity here because this thing looks really, really good. Uh, but I will say that clip, lands really really nicely in the hand i don't feel it whatsoever not even a little bit so I, I actually appreciate that and i know these clips are super super functional which you know as long as you're wanting function over uh form then this is going to be where it's at uh but yeah the little contouring and all the the little chamfers and everything really make for a very very ergonomic knife um this is a good one i like this one now the detent could be a little crisper. I mean, it's good action. I like the sound of it. And it is still breaking in. You can't push button it or light switch it, but I also can easily fail it. It just feels a little bit tight in the pivot and it might be, you know, let me throw some uh, KPL heavy on the detent ball. So if you guys don't know, KPL in my, well, in my opinion is the best for um, lubing up your knife and the heavy you put on the detent ball and then the regular you put on the bearings. You just need a little tiny, tiny little dab or do. <clears throat> just a little tiny drop. These bottles last for years. Um, I still technically have my first original bottle. There's hardly anything left in it, but I've had it for like five years. But, you know, I've obviously bought new ones since then. Um, anyways, let's check it out. A lot smoother. It's definitely getting smoother. 
So I imagine it just needs to break in. Yeah, it's getting a lot smoother actually. So yeah, hopefully this is something that just breaks in. And, and I, you know, I hate to say it like that as if there's something wrong with it. All I'm saying is that, you know, there is an overall smoothness that it has that's very, very nice. And, and you know, there's no grittiness. It's very glassy, but it feels like it's a little bit tight in the pivot. So either one, it could use a little quarter turn or two, it just needs a little bit of break in time. Anyways, beautiful stone washed finish. Um, as far as negatives go, the only real negative I have is the plunge grind. You know, I don't like that there's no clearance here. When I sharpen, I'm gonna sharpen into the plunge grind and I would prefer not to, especially on a knife that didn't deserve it. You know, they did not need to do this. They could have opened it up. They could have separated. There was a lot of things they could have done well on this, but all in all, solid, solid knife. By the way, petrified fish knives do always come with an extra pack of hardware for you. This is, the Rogue, the Petrified Fish Rogue. Wow, see this is very, very smooth. So this is, uh, you know, kind of, not the opposite because both of them are very glassy, but what I mean is that it's more free flowing with the drop. So um, anyways, it has a, almost like a Nesmuk blade shape. Um, I'm not sure exactly what to call it. It's 154 CM blade steel, love to see that. Plunge grind and choil is actually done a little bit better in this case. You can see where it starts and where it ends. Um, the, the G10 is a layered multicolor G10. And I'm sure there's other color options. Um, actually, I know there is. There always is from Petrified Fish. The ergonomics are really, really good. The, the flipper tab kind of pushes you back a little bit, but I actually like it. Um, this is nice and uh, chamfered around the edge. So, you know, it feels really, really good in the hand. I like this. Um, I feel like I could bear down on it pretty well. Um, access to the lock bar is very, very good. Uh, um, well done as as well. You can see there's plenty of access. Nice comfortable disengagement. Uh, flipper tab, nice and comfortable jimping. Nicely tuned jimping. I can fail it still, but you know it, it's a good, uh, a good amount of detent. Even though you know I can fail it, but that's 99% of knives I can fail. And I also can reverse flick off the blade. It's not the best, but you can do it. The clip in this case is a deep carry inset, deep carry inset clip with flat screws. Not reversible, but they do have T8 hardware all the way around, which I absolutely appreciate. The last one, I didn't even look at that. T6 is on this one. So, you know, that would be a negative too, in my opinion. Anyways, it looks like a PVD coating. Um, and, you know, I like with the red and black, I think it looks good. It's a good looking knife. And all in all, you know, um, this feels like a great budget knife. Or, or you could call it a mid-range knife because, I, you know, I'm sure it, it's, you know, over 50 bucks. But I can't imagine it being too far from that, you know. It feels like a, a good quality 60 65 maybe $70 knife. Let me actually look up the price. 78 bucks. Yeah, it feels a little bit on the higher side. Yeah, um, it's not a bad price, but it definitely could be a little bit better, um, like around 70, you know? That's what it feels like, a, you know, uh, $65, $70 knife. The other one we were looking at just a second ago. Okay, this one's $54. Now that makes a lot more sense. So, and that's for the green micarta one. Let me see if the price changes if I pick the carbon fiber one. Yeah, $70. So sorry, this one's $70, but they have micarta ones for under $60. So this to me is a great, is a reasonably priced knife. K110, arguably, um, you know, you wanna get it usually for under 50 bucks. Um, that's usually from my experience, but this does have really good quality, uh, very well done carbon fiber. So I'm definitely putting that into consideration. So I think that this one's priced pretty well. This one I think is just a little bit high. And I don't mean like, you know, like it's not absurd or anything like that, but I'd love to see it about 10, $15. Now $10 less, that, that would be really nice, but really good knife. So, you know, if it's something that, uh, that catches your eye, it's definitely well done. The next one is the Null Knives Ghoul. And this is a pre-order knife that opens up March 7th at 5 p.m. Pacific time or 8 p.m. Eastern time. And 
It is a very, very well done knife. Um, I believe this is Riet, but I'm not 100% on that. I know Null Knives does do Riet a lot, um, possibly Best Tech, but if, man, there's, there's something about this knife that I, I freaking love, and that is this lock bar. This is one of the best lock bars I've experienced in a while. Um, just look at the way it's done. It is a liner lock, but you see how it pops out here? So they put this stair step effect, perfect access, some of the most comfortable disengagement. It feels nice and solid the way it locks up. Um, it's not going to affect you as far as using it left-handed. So, you know, it does make it to where this is a very easy knife to use right or left-handed. Um, and then that drop, man, very, very smooth. This thing is really cool. I like this thing quite a bit. And it's not, it's not a big knife. Um, I can get a perfect four finger grip. So that tells you, you know, it's not a big knife because it is a, a perfect four finger grip, meaning, you know, I don't have any more room for anything else. Um, no more, no less. S90V clip point blade with this beautiful satin finish. It is a flat grind. Um, love the swedge on it. Good looking blade. Um, then the handle is all titanium with titanium liner with a steel lock bar insert, you know, in the liner. Um, very, very well done there. The liner is one-sided, so there's no liner on this side. It is only on one side. This side has heavy milling on it to bring down the weight. Titanium mill pocket clip, good looking clip. It does flow with the design. Uh, the ramp looks well done. Let's slip it. Oh man, yeah, that's a good clip. Great clip. Uh, the jimping on the front flipper, very well done. I freaking like this jimping a lot. This is an easy one to use. Um, I don't see anybody having issues with this one. It just sits in your hand nicely, so you can get to your get your thumb up there very, very easily. Whether it's the side of your thumb, you can roll it probably. Yep, you can roll it. This little corner does get in the way of rolling it, but as you can see, there's a little tiny bit of clearance there for you to lock it all the way up. You're just gonna most likely snap it though. Great side finger, great reach over, reverse flicks amazing, detent is perfectly tuned for all deployments. Yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one too. Um, and you know, the weight on it, to me, this feels pretty light. I see 3.5 ounces. There is multiple different versions, by the way. So, you know, this isn't the only color option, but it feels relatively light in my opinion. It feels lighter than 3.5, but that, you know, obviously it's 3.5. Uh, but the blade, you know, it's not a long, not, you know, it's a three inch blade. It's a three inch blade. So this is not a big knife. This is a full size knife, but it's a compact size that most people are probably going to gravitate towards as far as size wise. So uh, very well done by Null Knives. They, uh, very impressed. Um, as far as nitpicks and negatives go. So I do have one issue. There's no play any direction. It's rock solid. However, it does have failure with uh, a, with a light, well, it's not a light spine whack, but with a spine whack. So that to me, you know, obviously we just seen what happened to me here, you know, so that's something, you know, you tend to worry about. Do I think that that'll happen from pressure on the spine? No, I don't think so. I think that's a little bit of a harder smack than required, you know, than your, th than your thumb's probably going to put pressure. But it is something that I would like to see less companies having little issues with uh, just because, you know, you know, it, it is a thing. And there's a lot of knives, right? I can pull up even budget knives that we featured in this video that don't have that issue. So if a 40 or the 50, 60, 70, $80 knife can do it. I don't see why, you know, a 300 plus dollar knife can't do it as well. Oh, by the way, the Microtech Mini SOCOM Elite, uh, I think it's the Bravo, is available right now. So I will link them down in the description, at least as far as when I'm filming this. So if you want to get one of those mini SOCOMs, I, you know, I would have probably grabbed it um, a couple weeks ago when they first dropped, but they went so fast. So they are available right now. They'll probably go quickly. I want to get one, but I just don't know if I can swing it right now. I'm, yeah, I'm probably going to wind up grabbing one. Another knife that's available right now that I'm really, really tempted to get 
is the DLC DLC uh, mint colored handle uh, Spyderco Manix uh, Blade HQ exclusive in M4 steel. It has DLC M4. I freaking love DLC. I love M4. I love the Manix. Literally, that's just like everything I like in a knife. Um, and it's only like 135 bucks. 135 bucks USA made DLC M4 steel <laughs> ball lock. My goodness, that thing that's a great price. The next thing we're gonna check out is a shank. Yes, a prison shank. So this is handmade. I will put the guy who makes these in the description if you want to go check him out. He's just starting to build his page. So if you go to his Instagram, um, you know, he's just starting it, but this is something, you know, he, he's kind of doing on the side, making, you know, um, kind of crude um, shanks, you know, where it's, it's a little bit more realistic to what you would expect from a real shank, you know, uh, that was maybe made, you know, out, out of whatever possible, um, you know, like kind of like a prison shank. It does have paracord wrapped around it, which does offer not only really good grip, but really good texturing where it's not going to slip. Even if I don't cap it off, I don't think I would slip. I would cap it off anyways. The, the tip, very, very pokey. Um, you know, just the way these things are designed, they're designed to penetrate and do maximum damage as far as penetration goes. So, you know, this is something that <clears throat> everybody knows, you know, as something that you commonly see in prisons. And, you know, there's a reason why they're so popular. They're so popular because they work. They work and they do damage. And they're so... I want, they're, I'm not saying that it was very easy to make this, but they're easily made. They're, it's like the, the easiest thing to make to do maximum damage from, you know, um, a, a, a weapon, you know. So, Pokey gets right to the point. No pun intended. So seeing is that, you know, um, it, it is serious. It's just like a purpose-driven thing, right? So it doesn't need to be beautiful. It, it needs to work. And this is definitely something that would be extremely, extremely functional. But I will put these down in the description if this is something you are interested in or just want to check out more or possibly just want to talk to the guy who is making them. Also, I got some new stuff from Pyrotech. One thing I really love that Pyrotech does is check this out. They actually give you the hardness of your model. That is awesome. You don't see that from a lot of companies. S90V, this is the Kraken, obviously. 61.3, I think that's a three, it might be a two. Um, regardless, 61.2 HRC. Um, I'm happy with that from S90V. What I like to see is 61 to 62. So very happy to see that. Now, we're going to throw these scales on here in one second. If you don't know about the Kraken, you should. You absolutely should. Um, I've had multiple videos on it. It is a one, it's kind of like a new age Benchmade 940. It's not USA made, but it has a lot of the same characteristics that you get from the 940. It's got not thick geometry, but it's robust. It's robust enough to where you don't, you're not going to you break anything on. Nothing's going to chip. And, you know, it should do well. This one has a satin finish. I believe my other one has a stonewashed finish. Then we have a blasted titanium handle. And if you don't know, the scales literally just pop right off. So it comes off that easily. And then this side, you just have to take that screw off. So you just open up the blade, put your T8 in there. This is like the easiest knife to assemble, disassemble. And it comes with extra Omega springs and everything, by the way. So I can easily, quickly change out my Omegas without no struggles at all. Like you've seen how easy that was to take off. Bam, look at that. I, I got the Omega Springs right there. Everything's still put together. Ooh, ooh, I just dropped something. Luckily, they send extra hardware if you do lose anything. Um, but anyways, you have a, a solid knife still. Like, it's still all put together. It's just, you know, the scales are magnetic. So you can literally change out the scales. You can get, you know, like some anodized. You can customize these. That's amazing. So we're going to throw these new scales on right over here 
And we're gonna do it very quickly. It'll be the bl a blink of an eye. Technically, I don't even need to edit this. I could just um, keep it going. The, the most frustrating part's gonna be opening up these little bags and stuff. <laughs> so we go like, what is that? Oops, sorry. Well, bam. All right, kinda wanna hook it. There we go, bang. This, you just insert it just like this. It pieces right together, and then shablam! And now your knife is all put together. Okay, so I do have one little issue with this one. Um, I don't think it's going to be a common issue or anything like that, and I have no doubt that they won't just send me a new one. But my scales are... shifting a little bit. I can feel it in my hand. I'll just, this side's good. This side, nothing. This side. So, you know, it's just the fitment isn't the best. Now I've tried multiple of these. This is uh, my second version and you know, mo you know, obviously different scales. And I haven't had this problem, so I don't know how common it is or anything like that. It could be just a fluke. And like I said, I have no doubt that they won't just replace them. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, there's really no function problem. It's just the fitment is a little bit large. I'm gonna switch them back to these scales because these scales were fine. I had no problems with them. I do like this stone washed, um, almost galvanized look. It actually does, it looks just like galvanized. These are titanium, by the way. So the blasted finish is like a, this is just like, I think this is glass blasted. This is just like a Sabenza's finish. If you ever felt a, um, a CRK Sabenza, that's how this feels. So. Some people love it. If you don't, then there are other options like this. Um, now, like I was saying, the, this knife reminds me of the 940 so much. I think this is like a modern day 940 and arguably even better because the detent, in my opinion, is that's one thing that's better. The detent is, is much more... Um, it has more resistance, so it's a little bit snappier, and then it also rides on ceramic caged bearings. While, you know, the other one rides on washers, so if you prefer washers, then that might be your preference choice. But personally for me, I like bearings. So I think the action on bearings just happens to be a lot better. That doesn't mean I don't love washers still, because there are some knives I wouldn't change. I wouldn't put bearings on them. But, you know, in this case, I think that, uh, you know, this just, you know, it just helps it. Um, all in all, though, the, the Pyrotech Kraken is a, a freaking amazing knife. I love the knife. I think they did a good job on it. I think they did a good job on the design. Um, I think it is a simple design while also being innovative, you know, considering we have the magnetic scales. But, you know, it makes for ease of takedown, ease of maintenance, ease of everything, while also being just a solid knife, a, a tool, a great functioning tool that I think will serve most people very, very well. One thing I would change if it was up to me, um, I would get different thumb studs. Not that these are bad thumb studs. I, I don't mind them, but I wish there was a little more texturing. See how they're a little smooth? I would love to see uh, a little bit more texture on the, uh, the thumb studs. Here is my other one. This one's 61.7 HRC. Same steel, same everything. Actually, same, I think the same guy put them together too, Damon. Shout out to Damon. Anyway, so you can see the difference put, you know, put together between the blasted and the, I want to call it galvanized, and then the satin and stone wash. They, they feel very identical, basically, you know. Um, now, this is the thumb studs I like right here. I prefer these thumb studs over these thumb studs massively. So these ones are nice and grippy. I think that they should stick with these thumb studs. Stay away from these thumb studs. They're just a little bit slippery, and they don't have as much grip. Um, yeah, for sure. 
So, thumb studs, I wish were, weren't so smooth. I wish they were a little grippier. And then obviously, you know, this is a little issue with the, the size of this plate. You know, I'll just slap the other ones back on and I'm sure they'll send me a new set. But the satin finish looks really good on this. You know, this is gonna be, you know, I, I like that they send me a card with the HRC and everything on there. That's always a plus. So anyways, I will link uh, pyrotech down in the description they are an awesome new company to deal with um and you know something like the fitment of this doesn't even bother me because i have no doubt that they're not going to make it right uh which is in my opinion the most important thing actually i'm going to bring something up transparent knives the other day he was alive you know and we were talking every well, he was talking and we were all talking and listening you know chatting in the, the the chat shout out to transparent knives definitely go and check out his youtube channel awesome awesome guy in the community and he makes custom reblades for knives and does an amazing job amazing heat treatment amazing just a wealth of knowledge so he was talking about how important it is that how great it is for a company that deals with the problems the right way and how that that to him is a could be a higher cost meaning like he doesn't have a problem paying a little bit more if the company is a company that will deal with any issues because you're going to run into issues. No matter what, it, it's inevitable that you will have a something with an issue. It's just the way life is. The problem is, is what do they do about it? How do they respond to it? What is their, their call of action? How do, how do they, you know, how do they communicate with you? And do they fix it or do they come up with excuses or do they blame you? So that is something that I really appreciate about any company is how they deal with an issue, how they respond to it. And I have no doubt, you know, about Pyrotech. You know, I've been uh, talking to, with them, you know, for a while. I knew them before they started the company. And, you know, like I said, I have no doubt that they won't make this right. So it doesn't bother me as bad, you know, because I already know, like, hey, things happen, you know. Anyways, work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.